Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you. Tonight we're going to make an American version of a French classic, Tartiflette. Now I say the American version because Tartiflette requires Revolution cheese, which you cannot buy in the United States because we can't be trusted with raw milk cheese. So let's get cooking Tartiflette. Let's start with two potatoes in cold salted water, bring them to a boil, and then turn them down to a simmer. Gonna let them go about 45 minutes. They're done when a knife meets no resistance. Set them aside to cool. And since this is the American version, I'm going whole hog, so to speak. Uh, this is hog jowl. It's cured meat, has a good streak of lean in it. Uh, it is smoked. Mostly folks now use bacon, but originally uh, the recipe called for lardon, which basically is really fat pork. Chop it up pretty fine, about quarter inch pieces. Next, we want about three medium or two large onions. And I'm actually gonna use slices in this, but someone in the group asked for directions on chopping again. So I'm gonna chop one half here. Uh, when chopping, you wanna protect your fingers. I always open mine out. And then with a rocking motion, I chop. And if you'll notice my free hand, my fingers are curled. Um, that way you're not going to cut the tip of your finger off. Uh, and then with a rocking motion, I finish the chopping. And this is how I would do it for something uh, that uh, I was going to use finely diced onions in. And um, the most important thing here, of course, is a really sharp, well-maintained knife. Uh, now, for the rest of the onions, I'm going to put in slices and this little bit of chopped onion won't make any difference. But again, you move your fingers back and you keep them curled and I always cut with a rocking motion. So let's talk cheese, since cheese is the reason this is not an authentic tartiflette. We're going to get close. You can't buy the Revlochon cheese here in the United States because it is raw, unaged cheese. I've had it once in my life many, many years ago. And to be honest, I actually prefer brie and camembert. I'm going to use one round of brie and a half round of the camembert. And, you know, French with a southern accent's never quite right. Uh, cut it in half, across, and then long ways. And, you know, be sure to leave the um, rind on. Don't take that off, that's part of the dish. And that's all ready to go, just like that. And since I'm calling this an American casserole, you know, it has to be cooked in cast iron made in Sydney, Ohio. Uh, we're going to drop the meat in on a medium heat. I put it in a coal pan and turned it up to medium heat. We're going to cook this not quite crisp. When we get a really good sizzle and we've got that nice fat cooking out, um, we're going to add our onions. Now we're going to cook these slowly. Don't want to rush them. Whoops. Missed one there. Got to separate it a little. And stir them in with the meat really good. And we're going to let these simmer on medium heat. So I'm going to add a little pepper here. Uh, Fred compromised and got some nice 
peppercorns that are both red and black. Uh, so I'm gonna grind in some fresh pepper here. I am not going to salt right now because, you know, the meat is pretty salty. So I'm gonna wait and taste in a minute or two and then decide whether or not to add the salt. salt. So we're gonna stir these and cook them until the onions start getting a little color to them. We don't want to cook them done. We don't want to caramelize them. Uh, I'm just going to cook them till they're tender. And if you can see, I can cut into them uh, with a wooden fork. So they're tender. Uh, this is the point at which many people would add about a half a cup of white wine to deglaze the pan. Uh, number one, I don't need to deglaze this pan. There's nothing stuck to it. And number two, I don't cook with wine. So I'm going to drain these off take them to the side and get ready for the next step. So I've peeled and sliced my boiled potatoes and I'm going to arrange them in the bottom of this pan, uh, right in the same pan, and cover the bottom. When I get the bottom covered, and I'm, I'm sticking little pieces in, to get pretty good coverage. It doesn't have to be totally covered. I'm gonna pour in my onion and meat mixture and spread it out. This is smelling so good. Then we're going to arrange the rest of the potato slices on the top and cover as much as we can. I tried to save the least broken pieces for the top. Now's the time you want to check for salt and pepper. Um, mine was fine, uh, but you may need to add a little salt. And then we're going to add two cups of my homemade creme fraiche. This is so easy. I've made another video for you. And this really sets this casserole off. The creme fraiche makes it wonderful. Now we add the cheese. Not too close to the edge. You don't want it to cook over in your oven. But other than that, arrange it any way you like. Rind side up, cheese side down. It's going into a preheated 375 oven for 45 minutes. There you have it. Does that look luscious or what? You need to let it sit about 5 to 10 minutes if I can stand to wait that long. I'm going to plate this up but I want you just to have a chance to see uh, in the pan the richness and the creaminess of this casserole. Um, you know, I always say you can never have too much cheese, and this probably comes close, but it's just wonderful. Okay. And you know, I love potatoes. And I, I don't really eat very many potatoes in spite of what you see on the video, but I can tell you that I'm going to eat these and probably still a bit hot. But I have to give this a shot. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Knowing that nothing with potatoes, cream, cheese, and bacon and onions could be bad, this is this is exceptionally good. The sauce that you get from the cheese and the creme fraiche just out of this world. You have to try it. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us tonight. Please try this casserole. I can't tell you how good it is. See you again tomorrow.